I've built quite a few projects over the past year while doing this whole YouTube thing. Dining tables, coffee tables, shop projects, bookcases, you name it. For each of those builds, I pretty much knew exactly what I was doing heading into it and really wasn't scared. Well, scared is a bad choice of words. Let's say I was confident that I could complete the projects without any issue. This chair is different though. I've always wanted to make one, but never really knew exactly how to get through it. I also didn't know how to get through college, but managed to get through that with this technique too. So I modeled this chair off the angles and dimensions of an Adirondack chair. Well, let's be real, I copied it. I then played around with some different shaped legs until I settled on this shape here. What you've seen me work on so far is making an MDF template for the light design. And if you want to make this share for yourself, I have plans linked down in the description below. With the template sketched out, I used my track saw to cut all the straight lines and the jigsaw to cut all the curves. Once the rough shape was cut out, I finalized everything with a bit of sanding. You really want to make sure that you get your template as smooth as possible, since your finished pieces will be a direct copy of any imperfections that the template might have. I then marked out where I wanted to make the joints between pieces and cut those with a track saw, which broke the leg assembly down into four separate pieces. I placed one of the templates against the table saw fence to rip down slightly oversized pieces and rough cut them with the jigsaw. Now the largest piece of the template had quite a large curve, so I just skipped the whole table saw and went straight to the jigsaw for those. What you see me doing here is running a scrap piece of MDF through the table saw to create a reference edge where the blade will cut. I can then line my template up against the edge and screw down some reference pieces so that my workpiece will have the perfect angle joint cut. I'll then use the same process for cutting the rest of the joint faces, and then I taped down the MDF template and routed it out with a flush trim bit. While I work on all the template routing, I want to take a second to thank all of our Patreon members for supporting the show. Our supporters get exclusive benefits like random gifts, video calls with us, and placing hidden Easter eggs in our videos. So if you're interested in supporting the channel so that I can quit my full-time job to produce even more of these project videos, consider checking out the Patreon link below. But as always, there's no pressure. Just enjoy the video. With all the pieces routed out, I'm going to join them together with some dominoes. As always, dowels are an awesome method here, and I've built plenty of projects using dowels in the past. I just used the domino strictly for the speed of getting through this project so that you could see this video faster. Now these joints come together at some really weird angles, so I used my DIY clamping blocks to ensure that I had even pressure across the joints. With the final shaping done, I used the router to put a healthy round over on all the edges of the legs and then turned my attention to making the seat and back. I locked my blade into a perfect 90 using the UG1 from Bridge City Toolworks, but I'll show you a little bit more on that later. I could then rip clean edges on these boards and mark out locations for some small dominoes.
With the panel glued up, I could finalize its size using the table saw and my DIY crosscut sled. And if you want to see how I built this, I'll put a link down in the description below. I want the seat and backrest to join together at about an 80 degree angle. And in order to get my saw blade tilted to the correct angle, I set the UG1 universal gauge to about 40 degrees, or half a 80, and lock the adjustable reference leg into place. Over at the table saw, I placed the UG1 against the blade and locked down the perfect angle. No daylight means that this is spot on. The UG1 also has an adjustable marking gauge on it, which I use to lay down some reference lines for where I'm going to power curve the seat. And that's where I hit a little hiccup. Truthfully, I really wanted to put the time into carving the seat, but I got nervous that I would invest all the time into that part only for it to be wasted on the chair not actually working. Next time. I promise I'll do it. Anyway, to join the seat and backrest together, I used more dominoes in those clamping blocks that I told you about earlier. You really don't understand how valuable these clamping blocks are until you make them. And especially because you get to make them out of a bunch of scraps that you're going to throw out anyway. One other awesome feature of the UG1 is the depth gauge. I zeroed it out to get the round over bit on the router table at the perfect setting, but it would also be perfect for dialing the height of a rabbiting bit or even the height of a table saw blade. To join the seat and legs, I used some more dominoes to hold everything together. And after letting the glue set up overnight, to my surprise, this chair was done. This was definitely one of those milestone projects for me. I've been getting a lot of messages from people on Instagram about how they wanted to see me make a chair, and truthfully, I kept pushing it off because I wasn't sure I could do it. So shout out to everyone following me on Instagram and encouraging me to give this project a shot. I really forced myself out of the comfort zone and really want to try my hand at making some more chairs in the future. Who knows? Maybe next time I'll even make one out of wood that's more popular. Wait, 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 before we wrap up here, I know there's one question on your mind. Want to find out what happens? Check us out on Instagram at Spencely Design Co. See you on the next one.